that's interesting about this is you can see down here, it says Novatone. I don't know if you can see with all the strings in the way and stuff. But this is um, the only one that I've ever seen of the Novatone switchable fretboards, which was a company, I believe, in Des Moines, Iowa, that um, came out with this idea in, I want to say, the mid-'80s. And the idea is that you can take, this is the fretted, you know, regular fretted neck on the, or fretted fingerboard, fretboard on the base here, and you can take this fretboard, which is fretless, you can see no, no nothing, and you slide this off of here, like so, it's a steel strip under here, a magnetic strip on the back of this thing, you slide this into here, You have a fretless, you could switch between um, the fretted one, the fretless one, there were two more, I won't put them on here, but here's a fretless neck with the frets just indicated, the, the lines on it, and then this other one which is, well here, I'll do it just for fun. This is kind of a, a, it's got like a steel um, finish on it, and this is supposed to be what passed for a really psychedelic sound. Um, kind of a more metallic sort of sound. So uh, I was contacted by the Novatone company, like I say, back, I suppose, in the early to mid-80s sometime. And um, they wanted me to be their local kind of demo rep person in uh, Minneapolis, in the Twin Cities area where I was living at the time. And um, I said, sure. You know, they would give me a deal on getting, getting a base uh, fitted up with this thing if I would just send the base to them. And I don't remember what it cost me, I want to say. 50 bucks or something back then. But anyway, uh, I got it back, and then I was supposed to be the, the demo person for this. And needless to say, uh, since nobody's ever heard of this, it didn't catch on. And um, it's kind of fun to, fun to mess with. I have it on this old Fender. This is like a, just after uh, CBS had bought Fender for people who kind of know that history. And this is not the most high quality bass you've ever seen. I mean, it's heavy, it's kind of clunky, it doesn't have the original uh, uh, pickups in it, but it's not that it's a bad playing instrument, it's just that it's very heavy. It probably weighs about 13 pounds or more, and so I don't play it very often, but it makes it unique because it's got... It's got the, the uh, switchable neck. For general all-around playing, like I say, aside from the weight of the instrument, it really is not, uh, you know, not that bad a, a, a bass to play, but it's just a concept that um, they had big plans at the Novatone company. They were going to make all kinds of, you know, micro-fretted guitar fretboards and, you know, different scale, you know, instruments with different sorts of scales and tunings and things. But I'm quite sure that the company didn't last a year. And so, um, um, as far as I know, I have never seen another one of these. And if somebody has one, or somebody has come across one, or knows where one is, it would just be kind of fun to know how many of these they, they actually sold. Um, because, like I say, I have never seen another one. So anyway, that's the Novatone Switchable Fretboard. This is a um, Walter Woods amplifier. Kind of a legendary amp. This is the MI 100-8 uh, model, which I bought new in, um, I'm guessing 1982 or 83. And um, uh, Walter Woods is actually the person's name who makes these. He still, as far as I know, still makes them. Walter's probably got to be in his late 60s, I'm guessing by now. And he's only sold them, at least from a retail standpoint, 
um, by himself personally. They've never been in a store or in a catalog or any of that kind of thing. As new, um, new amps, it's always been just, you call Walter on the phone and you order it and when he has it built, he sends it to you. And I think as far as the price of this, I want to say it cost me about $700 in the early 80s, which is, I don't know what the equivalent would be now, but it's quite a bit of money. And, but I was you know, playing professionally full time and I had seen other, uh, especially upright players, playing these and it was really the kind of the gold standard at the time and in some ways still is for a certain kind of amp, especially for uh, you know, acoustic upright bass. that would kind of frustrate some of the players that really wanted to play um, electric bass, especially with a little kind of a dirtier sound, really couldn't get it with these amps because um, they wouldn't distort. I mean, it, you could push it until it finally would start to clip or it would, you know, you could really hear it um, if you really tr tried to overdrive it, but you couldn't, you couldn't dirty up the sound because it's just, they're not made for that. And um, it just was just too clean, but boy, if you wanted clean sound and really nice and clear, um, accurate, uh, you know, reproduction, especially for an acoustic bass, you, I mean, to this day, you really, I don't think you can really beat them. So anyway, there it was. 